Hello, this is question three of OCRA's further stats paper 2019. I always wonder why they put permutations and combinations and these type of probability questions and they've lumped it in with stats. I mean, of course, probability is connected to stats, but this is not really directly anything to do with statistics, this question. But this is where OCRA put this part in. So here we go. Uh, we've got 10 counters, six red and four blue and they are being arranged in some kind of random order right now if you imagine that they all had a number associated them from one to ten say then there would be ten different factorial ways that they could be arranged wouldn't there okay there would be ten different factorial ways they could be arranged so we need to find that's going to be on the bottom of our fraction we need to find the number of ways that we could put with our kind of 10 counters blue so that no blue has fewer than two red counters between them now it's a bit of a mouthful first of all but when you actually think about the arrangements there's only really one way that can happen it, we need to have in order for that to happen because we've only got four blue ones we need four two red ones in between like that blue then red red blue then red red blue so that's the only way to satisfy the requirement in the question no blue counters has fewer than two red quite counters in between that's the only way it could happen if we took one red that there and put it there then the the condition doesn't hold and because we've only got four blue ones and we've got three, uh, six red ones that's the only arrangement that can happen so amongst the blue ones there's four factorial different ways to uh, rearrange those blue ones imagine they were numbered one to four say and then amongst the red ones you know the, the ones numbered uh, five to ten there's six of them so that's six factorial and again as i mentioned earlier that's divided by ten factorial so that's our required probability is that which equals to one over 210 which feels reasonable because to be honest to randomly come down in that order doesn't uh, seem too surprising uh well it does seem surprising that it, what i'm saying is not surprising is that it's a relatively unlikely because you expect all kinds of different ways to come up okay so that's the first part second part uh, the first part i often think was harder to understand what they were getting at but once you realize they kind of got this kind of diagram it was easy enough part b is a type of question that once once you've seen it a few times i think it's okay but first time it's a bit confusing no two blue blue counters are next to one another now the best way to think about this is that we're, reds can be next to each other but there's different possible gaps between the red ones okay we've only got remember we've only got f uh we've got six red ones sorry we've got six red counters and the, the blue ones can come in any of those gaps between them but we can only have one of them so the blue can get we can put a blue there can put a blue there and so on So here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six red ones. And there's the number of possible gaps. And look at the number of places you can place the, the blue ones is seven possible ways. Seven ways, seven gaps in which the four blue counters, four blue counters can be placed. So that's the best way to think of it. Think of it, the seven possibilities for the gaps for blue. And then, of course, if you put the blue in it, any of those gaps, they won't be because they're going to be separated by a red. OK, so they're going to be so, so that that should work out fine. So what don't forget, we're dividing by 10 factorial, which is a total number again. Now, the blue, the um, blue ones themselves can be sorry the red ones themselves there's six of those they can be arranged in six factorial different ways so these ones remember they're all different counters they just all have red on them they can be um 
they can be rearranged in six factorial different ways but the blue ones can come in there's seven possible gaps okay that we need to place four counters and of course the order is incredibly important here so 7p4 is the way I would go about it you might see people write six factorial and think 7c4 that way and then do four factorial because you can then perm, perm them up by looking at combinations but you're going to get the same answer anyway so people think about these things in different ways so obviously the order of those four blue ones is important so that's probably the quickest way of doing it because 7p4 calc uh, that's got you can work that out individually on the calculator just key it in and when you do that you'll get one over six so a little bit of confusing question but i think once you see a, a few questions like that you should be all right but to think it's if the first time you see that type of question is in the exam you might struggle to get your head around it okay hope you find this video useful and we will go on to further questions in this paper uh in later videos thanks bye